Good afternoon and welcome to BBC London. I'm Thomas McGill. More reaction now to the local elections from around London and the Conservatives took some big hits in some areas overnight. In Harlow, they just about scraped through, holding on to control with a reduced majority of one seat. In Berkshire, Labour kept control of Reading Borough Council. But it wasn't all bad news for the Tories. They held on to Broxbourne in Hertfordshire. With more from Essex, here's our political reporter, Simon Dedman. While well, counting continues across Essex this lunchtime, here in Basildon, so far it's looking like the pattern we've seen last night repeating itself of Labour doing well. They've picked up all three seats in a marginal ward of Pitsy South East and the Conservatives have been losing seats to independents. One senior Conservative described it as looking bad uh, for them and it looks like the authority could be heading towards no overall control. Conservatives possibly still the largest party, but they might be locked out of power by Labour and independents. Over in Castle Point, so far, the Conservatives haven't won any seats thus far. They've all been picked up by independents. Well, later today, Labour are going to be holding a celebratory rally after their landslide win in Thurrock, the council, which, of course, has been indebted because of investments that have gone wrong under the Conservatives' watch, and they were punished by voters uh, in these local elections. But there has been some uh, um, wins for the Conservatives. They've managed to hold on to Harlow by a really tight margin. Labour were expecting to win that seat. Keir Starmer even describing it, along with Thurrock, as one of Labour's real targets. He went there the day before polling day, but that wasn't enough to get Harlow across the line. That will be of some concern, especially as that seat is a classic bellwether in the general election. But we will be bringing you more of the results later on BBC London this evening. And there will be more results coming in across the day from around London. Tune in to your local BBC radio station and the BBC News app for all the very latest. In other news, a man has been arrested for a public order offence after a member of staff from a coach which was due to transport asylum seekers out of London was caught verbally abusing a protester. It happened during an incident yesterday when police clashed with protesters in Peckham over the planned move to the Bibby Stockholm barge in Dorset. Passengers on the Elizabeth Line say a gap between the train and some of the platforms in West London is dangerous. It comes after one man broke his foot getting off a train at Ealing Broadway. TfL says the platform meets safety standards. Our transport correspondent Tom Edwards reports. I mean, look at this gap. It's just ridiculous. It, it, this is a modern £19 billion railway system and we have that. This is a brand new station and we have that, right? Um, getting on is difficult, getting off is even more dangerous, right? Somebody's going to fall there, bang their head and die. Eric Leach broke his foot getting off an Elizabeth Line train here at Ealing Broadway. He says the drop is too high and dangerous, especially in rush hour. I was initially shocked to see what a big drop it was and there were people getting, trying to get on as people were trying to get off. Lost my balance, came down, hit the deck, broke my foot, smashed up my knee, had to be uh, um, taken with a wheelchair and a taxi home and went to hospital, x-ray, broken, broken uh, bone in my left foot. And I spent eight days on the sofa, couldn't get upstairs. Thank God I had a downstairs toilet. And I just think this is absurd. On the central section of the Elizabeth line, there is level boarding from the platform to trains. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. But in outer London, at some stations, that isn't the case. Platforms here are older and owned by network rail. And at some stations, like Ealing Broadway, there's a drop. Transport for London says three accidents involving gaps have been reported to them since the Elizabeth line opened. My concern is that had I hit my head, I could have killed myself, right? But mums with buggies, people with heavy luggage, disabled people, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And, as I said, 19 billions worth of bespoke train and a brand new station. 
Gaps on new platforms should meet certain safety standards. The height from the platform to the train shouldn't be more than 23 centimetres and the horizontal gap shouldn't exceed 27. And while this vertical gap seems larger, the regulator says with old platforms, the costs of reducing the gap should be balanced with the risk. They either got to raise the platform or lower the track. Transport for London says it's sorry about this incident and says the gap does comply with safety standards, although it recognises older stations can have a larger gap. It says it's working to ensure all of its stations are accessible. Until something changes, though, Eric won't be using the Elizabeth line. Tom Edwards, BBC London. Now, Sadler's Wells will host a celebration of hip-hop culture this weekend with DJs, graffiti artists and some of the world's best dancers. We caught up with Londoners John Z. D. and Ivan Michael Blackstock during final preparations. I demand loud noise from the audience. So for all those people that have been sleeping under a rock and don't know anything about hip-hop culture, the dances in hip-hop Breaking, you've got popping, you've got crump dance, you've got locking, and they're all slightly different. So my name is Ivan Michael Blackstock. I'm an artist and creative director, and I'm performing on Saturday, the 4th of May, with my work, Trap Lord. Back in 2015, I was in a sensitive place and what I wanted to do is to gather some young men together who I also felt this strong connection with that felt that they were kind of dealing with some, you know, internal struggles. So I found this sort of random abandoned leisure centre in East London and gathered some dancers, some rappers, some really, some amazing creatives and we just spoke. So, <laughs> well it's crazy, last year I received this accolade, the Olivier Award and you know, it was kind of like a movie. I saved the people because I had my family there. I had some of the original members of Trap Law since 2015, you know, and we used to like really share these kind of, you know, deep moments and even on stage, these profound moments. And then now it's kind of led us to winning this award. And, you know, I think what's really important for me is also seeing young black men and other men to see this work, you know, and knowing that it's okay to express yourself in this sort of way, either using your words, either using your movement, or actually just coming together and just building some sort of brotherhood and collective. And that takes us to the weather with Kate. Good afternoon. It has been a rather damp end to the week and soggy approach to the bank holiday weekend. We've had some heavy outbreaks of rain today, rather grey skies. This afternoon, we'll gradually start to see it become a little drier and a little brighter. Now, further north, you're likely to hang on to that cloud. Still one or two showers, but further south, much drier. And we'll start to see some brighter spells, even a bit of sunshine by the end of the day. Temperatures, though, significantly chillier than yesterday at 14 Celsius. Overnight, any remnants of that cloud will clear away. So overnight it's dry it's clear the wind lights we could see some mist and fog forming by saturday morning minimum temperature chilly at four celsius now once any mist lifts we'll start to see some sunshine tomorrow it's a bit more cloud edging in as we head through the afternoon coming up from the south and that brings the chance of a scattered shower temperatures tomorrow a little less chilly than today at 17 celsius now as we head into sunday a similar start we've got some sunshine chance for shower in the afternoon and then some rain pushing in as we head into the evening and overnight into bank holiday Monday. Now it is going to be quite an unsettled bank holiday. We'll see some spells of rain. Temperatures across the weekend though staying fairly similar in the mid-teens. As we head to Tuesday, high pressure builds and temperatures gradually get warmer by the end of next week. And that's it from me. Just a reminder that counting won't start until tomorrow in the race for Mayor of London. We'll be back at 6.30 with more reaction and analysis to those local election results. But for now, have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye.